வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் கைனமேட்டிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் கிராஸ்பிங் அண்ட் ரீச்சிங் இந்த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோஸ் வி லுக் அட் டூ லிங்க் சீரியல் கைனமேட்டிக் சேஞ்ச் அண்ட் த்ரீ லிங்க் சீரியல் கைனமேட்டிக் சேஞ்ச் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி லுக்கிங் அட் அ மோர் ஜென்ரலைஸ்ட் நொட்டேஷன் ஃபார் n link serial kinematic chain what could, what would be a method that you would use to compute the end point coordinates when there are n links with different link lengths the popularly used method in uh, the field called as dh parameters denavit hartenberg parameters and so called as dh parameters as it is in the two link chain and the three link chain we saw that uh, the forward kinematics itself becomes complicated after some point and the inverse kinematics is a little too complicated unless you have some assumptions you really cannot even solve for the, the inverse kinematics either there must be some constraint or there must be some this constraint can be a geometrical constraint this constraint can be a physical geometrical constraint that uh, uh, a particular link cannot go beyond a particular point or this constraint can be such that a uh, movement in a particular joint is somehow linked to movement in a different joint that kind of some constraints you need to have to be able to uniquely identify or uniquely solve for the inverse kinematics equation and this complexity keeps on increasing as the number of links proceed we saw that in the previous case because two link kinematic chain we solved that was not too bad it was relatively easy the moment we jumped to three link suddenly the complexity jumped and as the number of links keep on increasing the complexity keeps on increasing so also uh, so far we have assumed only planar kinematic chains but then uh, real world robots and real world humans can make movements that are not in a plane right now the movement that i'm making is in space is in 3d right technically you can solve for this technically you can still use trigonometry and uh, first principles to solve for this but it will be a little too tedious a little too difficult to solve right so we are in a situation where we need to use some analytical method some generalized analytical method to solve for these both forward kinematics and inverse kinematics right so this was first suggested by denavit and hartenberg in 1955 so denavit and hartenberg used some standard notations right some Uh, specific notations that are always followed using their method right these are every joint is represented by a coordinate frame there is a coordinate frame that is placed at every joint every single joint and this is such that and this coordinate frame is placed such that that the z axis is always the joint axis the z axis of the joint is always a joint axis this is how it's placed by definition for example if the joint is a revolute joint then z axis will be along the direction of the axis about which the joint rotates right or if it's a prismatic joint then the z axis will be along the axis about which the joint translates so by using these methods by using this simple uh, approach a manipulator a multi link manipulator becomes a whole bunch of set of coordinate frames right only coordinate frames are there in this the links alone how do you define the links the links are defined by the relative position and orientation of their frames of the coordinate frames right so the shape of the link 
is eliminated. What kind of link this is? That is eliminated. This approach is called the DH parameters or the Denavit Hartenberg convention. This. And this consists of four parameters in total, two joint parameters and two link parameters. Two joint parameters and two link parameters are used in DH convention. Right. And what is the notation? Links are always from 0 to n and the 0th link is the fixed link or the ground. Joints are always from 1 to n. So, the ith joint is between links i minus 1 and i. Remember, so remember that link starts from 0 whereas joint starts from 1. So, that means that the first joint is between the 0th link and the first link. Okay. Something to keep in mind. Consider uh, these two links i minus 1 and i and there are three joints that are involved. These are joint i minus 1, joint i and uh, joint i plus 1. Okay. These are connecting the two links, link i minus 1 and link i. The z axis is always along the joint. We mentioned this previously that the z axis is always along the joint axis. Right. The ground is also shown in the figure right as shown you know the fixed link 0 link is also shown. Now, the question is how to find now the question is how to find the x axis right and how to find the y axis. Z axis is relatively easy to define because uh, that is the joint axis. How do you find the x axis that is the question right. So, it turns out that you define the x axis as the common normal between the z minus 1 axis and the z axis right. The x i minus 1 axis is defined as the common normal between the z i minus 1 axis and the z i axis. Okay. So, this is the z i minus 1 unit vector and this is the z i unit vector. Now, the question is uh, what is uh, x i minus 1? that has to be because this is a plane that has to be the unit vector uh, because this is space because this is space that is that vector that makes an angle of 90 degrees with both the z i minus 1 axis and the z i axis that particular common and there will only be one of them. So, that particular common normal is the x i minus 1 axis, this is it. Now, the point of intersection of the x i minus 1 axis with the z i minus 1 axis, the point of intersection of the z i minus 1 axis and the x i minus 1 axis is the origin of the i minus 1 coordinate frame, is the origin of the i minus 1 coordinate frame. Okay. Now, how will you find the y i minus 1 axis that is the origin, but you still have to find the, the y axis. You use the right hand thumb rule because you know the z axis, you know the x axis, find the y axis right. Use the right hand thumb rule to find the y i minus 1 axis. Right. Likewise, repeat this process for z i and uh, you know remember for the case of z i you will have to do it for x i axis that is the x i axis is the normal between z i and z i plus 1 between these two and so on and so forth. Repeat this process then find y i then find y i axis then find z i plus 1 then find uh, you know x i plus 1 then find y i plus 1 so on and so forth this repetitively iteratively you will have to keep doing this is the framework that it looks a little complicated, but with some practice and with some understanding 
we will be able to catch with this. So, this is just the description. Right. Now, what are the four dh parameters defined? One is alpha i minus 1, this is the angle between z i minus 1 axis and z i axis about the x i minus 1 axis. Okay. This is that angle that is alpha i minus 1, this is called as the link twist angle. Then link length a i minus 1, this is the distance between z i minus 1 and z i axis along the x i minus 1 axis. Remember that is not this link length, rather this distance. Okay. Something to keep in mind that the link length is the length along the x i minus 1 axis, right. Distance between the two axis z i minus 1 and z i along the x i minus 1 axis, that is called link length. And then there are two joint parameters, joint offset d i, which is the distance between x i minus 1 and x i along the z i axis. So, this is the z i axis, this is the z i axis, the distance between the x i minus 1 axis and the x i axis along the z i axis that is this distance. That is, uh, yeah, that is that distance, right. This is called as the joint offset d i. Right. Then joint angle theta i, this is the angle between x i minus 1 axis, this is that and x i axis, that, is that about the z i axis right that about that axis that is theta i minus 1. So, once you define the joint parameters and the link parameters for all the joints and for all the links in the manipulator, then you can construct a what is called as a Denavit Hartenberg table or the dh table that contains n rows corresponding to n links and uh, 4 columns. What are the 4 columns? Link twist angle, link length, joint offset and joint angle, these 4. Then you can use this uh, dh table to find the forward kinematics equation and then solve for them. To do this, we construct the what is called as a uh, homogeneous transformation matrix at T that is a 4 by 4 matrix. This is found by multiplying 4 individual matrices which are essentially 2 rotation matrices corresponding to alpha i minus 1 and theta i 2 joint rotations and 2 translations corresponding to you know a i minus 1 and d a, there are only 4 parameters right, 2 are angular parameters and 2 are distance parameters. So, that this is done, why is, why are we doing this? Because the frame i minus 1 is transformed to frame i right, there is a transformation that is happening for uh, the frame i minus 1 to i and so on and so forth. In future, we will be discussing a bit more detail in about uh, rotation matrices. We will be discussing more details about rotation matrices in future videos. For now, let us just say that this 4 by 4 homogeneous transformation matrix is obtained by using 2 angular parameters and 2 distance parameters. Right? Now, what would this uh, transformation matrix look like? This is how it will look like. This is, this is the transformation between i minus 1 and i. How do I know this? Because that is the notation. It says t subscript i minus 1 superscript i is the transformation between the i minus 1th frame and the ith frame. In this, I have this 3 by 3 mat square matrix, right. 
this 3 by 3 square matrix is the one that is giving an idea about the overall rotation that is happening, the total rotation, not individual rotations, the total rotation that is happening because there are two rotations that are happening, one involving theta i, the other involving alpha i minus 1, there are two rotations that are happening. This 3 by 3 matrix gives me the or gives me a sense of the total rotation that is happening, okay. This column gives me a sense of you know the translation that is happening and I have added the last row 0, 0, 0, 1 just to make the whole transformation matrix square otherwise this is a you know there are only 3 rows and 4 columns to make it square we have added the fourth row. So, once again this uh, transformation matrix T is transformation of link I with respect to the link I minus 1, I minus 1 to I right. and uh, this 3 by 3 matrix is the rotation matrix, we will see more details in future, indicates the total orientation change, the total change in orientation. This is the position vector 3 by 1 vector which indicates the change in distances or the positions. Now, forward kinematics essentially is used to find position and orientation of the end effector. I am not interested in knowing the individual link parameters in a multi link chain. I am interested in knowing the end point coordinates, right? Uh, position and orientation of the end effector with respect to the base, with respect to the ground, with respect to the fixed link. If there is a serial uh, chain with the n plus 1 links, I am interested in finding this uh, T0 to n which is the transformation of the nth link with respect to the 0th link. That would mean that there are many matrix multiplications that I will have to perform. Homogeneous transformation matrices like the one that we saw in the previous slide, they will have to be multiplied in sequence to obtain the transformations. So, therefore, you will have this T0 n as T01 plus T12 T01 times t 1 2 times t 2 3 times etcetera etcetera t n minus 1 to n. Remember the multiplication is done in this direction right, the multiplication is done in this direction. So, these uh, transformation matrices are multiplied on the left hand side right. So, to obtain the last t matrix to the 0 th, or that is the last t matrix on the nth frame to the t matrix on the 0th frame right. If I perform it in the other direction, for example, it will not give me the correct result. Why? Because uh, matrix multiplication is not commutative. I will not get the same result. Right? So, we must be very cautious about how we apply this transformation matrices. So, in this video, we saw a generalized notation for studying an n link serial kinematic chain and Denavit Hartenberg convention or the Denavit Hartenberg parameters for defining and understanding the endpoint coordinates or the in the forward case in the forward kinematics case for describing a transformation matrix. Thank you very much for your attention.